What is one thing that you would highly recommend? It could be personal or business related. A quote that, that I have been saying more now than before is that becoming intentional is more important than being brilliant. And as founders and leaders, we think we have brilliant, we are great ideas and all these things, but gosh, figure out the one thing each one of us, your organization is good at, great at, that you shine. Read. That's it. You can learn a lot by doing, for sure. You can learn a lot by, by speaking to people. But reading is a thing that is so simple to do. Most people don't do it. I heard a statistic that the average college graduate reads half a book a year in the area of their professional expertise. So if you just read like a couple books a year, you're like way ahead of the game. Just read. Uh, there's so much knowledge and nuance that can help you in your role. And especially as a B2B founder, there's so much failure that people have experienced that they've overcome that they've written about in books. And there's no reason for you to experience that same failure if someone else <laughs> did it and, 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 you know, and, and codified it for you. So I'd say, you know, for myself, I, I kind of think big picture, like for me, especially in LinkedIn, I've tried to learn as much as possible. And I've found the most information from like joining specific groups of things that I want to get involved with. And whether it's, whether it's that group has a podcast or whether it's like just a, you know, maybe a Facebook or a LinkedIn group that I join, I learn from those people. I find like having those conversations and asking those specific questions and those are some of the most valuable you know, places where I've learned the most. You know, you can go read a book. And so, so you can go like read a blog or like read, you know, read a book or like watch a video about something, but oftentimes you might have a very specific question you need to get answered. So I found that some of these communities out there have been awesome for being able to like ask a specific question and maybe like share, you know, I've had times like before where I've, I've like shared new updates, you know, stuff on LinkedIn and someone's like, Oh, you know, I've just, I was just running into that problem myself. Like now, now, now I know what to do. Yeah, well, I have transformed how I use email. I sound like I I'm work for Basecamp, but I don't, I don't know. Have you heard of Hey, it's a new email platform from Basecamp and it is, the anti Gmail, I've become not like tinfoil hat, but I've been really careful about the data that I share. Yep. So I've been using DuckDuckGo for my browser, and Hey is Basecamp inspired. They don't have company email yet, but as soon as they do, I'm going to be investing in it. And it, it's paid, and uh, it filters out everything. It, it has much more nuanced and organic ways of organizing the email that you use, and screening senders, and you know, disabling bots and trackers. And uh, it's just it's completely changed how I use email. The way we we say it to our entrepreneurs is, you're always building a, a bench, right? And it, that kind of seems self-serving when you when you say it that way but really what you're doing is you're always taking meetings you're always helping people when you can you're getting to know folks even when there's not a direct right now objective right and so so Brett you and I've talked for for several weeks now and just kind of think about maybe down the line sometime we might be able to help each other out right we might be able to get in a deal together or we might be able to use your services but there's no action on right now but you're building that network you're treating people the right way. What we say is we're building that bench. So when the time is right, you have those people that you can count on. Take inventory of stuff you were doing. Take inventory of stuff that you were engaged in, initiatives that you were doing, things that you were very decidedly not doing, as well as things you were choosing to do. And that's your list of stuff that you did. That's stuff that you can own. That's stuff that you can do again. And so to me, the answer to, to your question is anything that comes back to each of us as, as a point of that we recognize I caused that, I'm accountable for that, I'm responsible for that, I can do that, I can initiate that, I can own that, that's something that is useful. Anything that is put someone else on a pedestal, put some other thing as the reason why it all went well, this and that, the other, those are not useful. Those are not truthful. And those are smoke and mirrors and those are red herrings. So that's, that's my, that's my answer is like, that's the thing that I would say. It's like the stuff that comes back to you from a standpoint of ownership is the stuff that's good. And that's good and bad. Right. It's like, well, you know, something went really wrong. Good. What did you do to make it go wrong? Yeah, not, from the not from the standpoint of blame, not from the standpoint of, it's not that. It's simply, okay, what'd you do? Well, I, 
really, I, I didn't do blank and blank and blank and blank. Thank you. What should you have done? Blank, blank, blank. Good. The one thing I would highly recommend is taking care of yourself no matter what else is going on. So no matter where you are in your business, no matter where you are in your life, no matter what is going on around you, take care of yourself. I mean, that means standing up because then oxygen goes to your brain, taking a walk, getting out of your office, clearing your head, because A, it's good for you as a human, it's also really good for your business. It gives you the opportunity to let go of all the stuff that's in your head so that you can think. To all the entrepreneurs that are listening to this podcast, get to know your investor. Get to know, I don't care how you're gonna do that in this pandemic. Figure out a way that you're gonna be with them in person. Figure out a way that you're gonna look in the eyes, check their expression, look into their soul. This is the person you're gonna be with having a relationship for the next eight to 10 years. If you are just taking some, somebody who is giving you higher valuation or somebody that just happens to be at a logo firm, watch out. I mean, the logo firms uh, might have a few billion dollar funds and a C plus or A is not necessarily meaningful for the success. They might give you high valuation to just win the term sheet, but it doesn't matter. You know, there are good guys there too. Figure out the founder VC fit. We always talk about product market fit and the founder market fit, all of that stuff. But the founder VC fit is something that we don't look because when, when you have absolute alignment on the board, when you're going with Vox and when you're going and having off-board phone calls and text messaging with your board member, that's phenomenal. That's so much stress of your mind. You don't need to manage inside. You can charge ahead like a true entrepreneur. Try to get that on your, on your investor side, on the board side. Turning the lights off or just dimming the lights about two hours prior to, to bed for me, has been really helpful in, in falling asleep in a timely fashion. So, and if you can't do that, if, if for whatever reason you need the lights on, then getting a pair of, say, blue blocking glasses, which you can probably get online for 50 bucks, which basically, because the problem with blue light, whether it's your you know, house lights or whether it's your smartphone, the TV, is it suppresses the release of melatonin, um, which is critical for us uh, to, to get us to sleep. Um, but by wearing these glasses or by turning the lights down, it effectively has the opposite effect, which makes it much easier to fall asleep. And sleep is absolutely critical. Like so many people are only getting about five to six hours sleep a night, but unless you're a couple of standard deviations from the mean, most people need close to eight hours in order to regulate their emotions, in order to be able to think critically, to be great problem solvers and uh, and everything that comes with that. And the, the lack of that eight hours over ex an extended period of time has also been shown to preempt neurodegenerative disease, Alzheimer's, dementia, and everything else. I think it's one thing that perhaps we don't pay enough attention to. And so many of us think that I'm fine. I perform well on four hours sleep a night. But the thing about that is you don't know you're sleep deprived when right. you're sleep deprived. You've just normalized that. That's become your baseline. And if you do cultivate the ability to get a full night's rest over extended periods of time, you might find that you feel like a completely different person. For me, it was, I wish that I had been more focused on my physical health earlier in my career and blessed being COVID. And now I've been starting the past couple of years, really working on eating better, like using like a whole 30 kind of framework and now working out with a trainer three times a week. It's remarkable how I'm helpful that is going back to being a better CEO and, and like father and, and husband and just better mental state, feel better physically, very personal. I wish I'd started this habit and behavior far earlier. It's not surprising. It's not big or some big aha or some, um, you know, trick, but I know lots of people who don't really take their physical health as seriously as they could or really work on it. I've still discovering huge benefits for actually taking the plunge and, and making it a, a focus.